about me. I watch it. I look at that all the time. Additional legal matters at hand. I'm not able to give a full formal statement at this time. Um, but very briefly, though, I uh, do want to give my condolences to the Flick family. Um, there's going to be some other information in the future that would be of interest. And uh, I hope things will give you some some peace of mind. Thank you. And I'll note that I did read your comments in the pre-sentence investigation as well. Thank you, friend. All right, we are going to take a 15 minute recess so that I can complete the sentencing order based on what I've heard today. This has been an incredibly difficult case for the Floyd family to have to endure. We are here after a jury verdict, finding him guilty of these offenses. And the court's consideration should not only be focused on the aggravating factors, but the mitigating factors as well. The Minnesota Sentencing Guidelines Commission was established for a reason. And yes, the court in circumstances like these has discretion to go beyond an aggravated sentence beyond the presumptive sentences established by the sentencing guidelines. But the sentencing guidelines don't differentiate between second degree murders. Someone robs a liquor store, a police officer is involved in an incident, and a person dies in police custody. The law presumes, the legislature presumes that the the sentencing guidelines as established is a su sufficient penalty for all of the second degree murder categories or cases you would see. From 2019 back to 2010, a total of 90 people were sentenced. Okay, he did a shit ass job. He did a shit ass job throughout the case already and I just want to point out, like, you know, this is a good opportunity to unload your anxieties and your anger and your frustrations on this person, which is fine. I don't even think that he's a good person to begin with. But uh, there, I will describe to you once again, the reason why he's doing this is because he wants to uh, present his client in the most sympathetic way uh, that he can because that's his fucking job. I mean, he's still most likely a scumbag but uh you know he's just a he's doing his job here for second degree murder those sentences those people there were more than that but people who had a zero criminal history score more than 90 people were sentenced 67 percent or 60 of those 90 people received a guideline sentence of 150 months so two-thirds of all people in this same position received a guideline sentence. 20% received an aggravated sentence, 18 of the 90. And 12, or excuse me, 13% or 12 individuals Didn't you just have the opposite? were granted. Didn't you just have the opposite opinion when we were watching the murder mystery shit? Well, I'm describing why he's saying this stuff, because it is my job to also tell you that, like, this isn't just purely out of uh, him being a piece of shit, but a part of him being a piece of shit and, like, routinely trying to get off uh, murderer cops and shit like that, uh, he's a piece of shit separately. But also on top of that, the reason why he's describing uh, the situation in this light is because it's his fucking job to do so. I'm not saying that to defend him. I don't think he, he should be defended. But uh, this is literally the reason why he is trying to offer a sympathetic light offer his client's uh, side in a sympathetic light in a last-ditch attempt to fucking lower uh, the, the sentencing from the judge as best as he can. Mitigated departures. So if the legislature and the intent of the sentencing guidelines is to eliminate sentencing disparity, the law should presume that the guideline sentence is what is appropriate in this case. Judge may take... You may take into consideration at this point those aggravating factors, but you have to counterbalance them, which is the goal of the law with the mitigating factors. 
I know that this has been an incredibly difficult case for the Floyd family to have to endure. The state of Minnesota, uh, likewise, the prosecutors in this case have endured quite a bit, as has Mr. Chauvin's family. This is a case that is change has changed the world to some degree and I hope it's positive but it's my hope that the court follows the sentencing guidelines applies the law in a reasoned manner and imposes a just sentence thank you Thanks, Mr. Chauvin would you join Mr. Nelson at the lectern Uh, Mr. Chauvin, th this is your opportunity if you wish to uh, give any input to the court. And so I turn it over to you and your attorney. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, at this time, due to some additional legal matters at hand, I'm not able to give a full formal statement at this time. Um, but very briefly, though, I uh, do want to give my condolences to the Floyd family. Um, there's gonna be some other information in the future that would be of interest. And uh, I hope things will give you some, some peace of mind. Thank you. And I'll note that I did read your comments in the pre-sentence investigation as well. Thank you, friend. All right, we are going to take a 15 minute recess so that I can complete the sentencing order based on what I've heard today. And let's reconvene at two minutes ago as this crowd they began to gather here. So what they wanted they uh, to listen to this in this uh, in this uh, square, actually, it's right outside the courthouse, and they've been listening through a speaker here, and they've been reacting as they uh, as we hear this uh, sentencing unfold. And I just uh, spoke with um, family over here. You guys came here from Chicago, right? Yes, we did. So what's your name, sir? Willie Burton. Willie Burton. What's your reaction to what you've heard so far? They just took a break. I know you were not listening since the last few seconds, but former officer Chauvin spoke very briefly. And I just wanted to get your thoughts. Why was it so important for you to be here? And what do you think will be an appropriate punishment? I'm here today from the city of Chicago. I brought my daughter. Uh, my daughter is uh, somebody of, of the autistic spectrum. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure she feels, breathes, and knows what justice looks like and sees it from the ground level. Um, justice is a long process. Mm -hmm. um, we have to make sure our kids, our partner, mm -hmm with that process, but today is a very important step on people realistically seeing if the government and the city and the state is going to hold themselves accountable to make sure that we see what real justice looks like and not twisted justice. So the prosecution has come back and they have said that they would want to see 30 years in prison for former officer Chauvin. The defense has said that they would want uh, probation and time served. They're arguing that, you know, he's already served his time and they want probation. What's your reaction to that? What do you think would be appropriate? Would you want to see on the higher end? Or what, what are you thinking uh, for the uh, sentencing here? What would be appropriate is whatever message is sent to police across the nation to make sure that they don't do this, that they understand what um, de-escalation looks like. If this can't send a signal to show that this doesn't need to happen again with police doing senseless killings, then the message wouldn't serve today in relation to the sentencing. Thank you, sir, very much for talking to us. We really appreciate it. Um, so, Lester, this is, um, you know, there's, they're waiting here uh, to see what Pretty the good. sentence will, will be handed down. Uh, Lester, as you know, we were here two months ago in this very spot, actually, right outside the courthouse. And it was a similar scene. It was a smaller crowd this time. But back then, people were listening uh, to the verdict uh, come down, and there were cheers that erupted. I can tell you, you know, when we heard speaking of the people here in the crowd, they would want to see on the higher end. And uh, Chauvin be sentenced to at least 20, 25 years. Again, prosecutors asking for 30. He faces a maximum of 40 years in prison. As you've reported, Lester, uh, prosecutors, um, you know, they say because of aggravating factors, he should get on the higher end of that uh, of those sentencing guidelines. But again, there is high anticipation here. This is.
is a community that has been waiting for the sentence to be handed down for quite a while. Again, um, they are taking a break now while we wait for court to resume. Lester. All right, Gabe, thanks very much. Mary Moriarty is a former chief public defender for Hennepin County. Mary, thank you for being with us. Uh, let's talk about those aggravating factors. Clearly, the assistant attorney general uh, made it very clear this is not, in his view, a typical second-degree murder case. How important are the, these factors in determining the sentence? They're extremely important, and I think the judge gave us uh, a heads up about that when he wrote a memo after he found four of the five aggravating factors that the attorney general was looking for. So he wrote that he thought that Derek Chauvin abused his position of trust as a peace officer, and he also wrote quite a bit about the particular cruelty that Chauvin inflicted upon George Floyd, that this was a, a lengthy death that George Floyd had been begging for his life, um, that it must have been terrifying. And, and so I think we're going. We're about to hear Judge Cahill directly address Chauvin, and I believe talk about these aggravating factors. We have. Uh, I don't want to presume what the judge will decide here, but typically in in a, in a murder case uh, like this, will the judge? Have I don't think. I, I don't think he's going to really get like just number, probation uh, or anything like that. If that's what you guys are yeah. thinking, no, I think he's going to get fucking slapped in the I, face. I don't know that the, there's a typical murder case like this, but likely yeah, a I'm max sure sentence. Judge Cahill already knows uh, the number that that he is going to give. I know he I'm spent behind. a lot We're of time researching. The... Remember that both sides did file memos, pretty extensive memos on what they wanted the sentence to be. He's also had an opportunity to look at that defense memo pretty closely, which. It was interesting to me because I would describe it as being as very defiant, which you could see throughout what we've already seen. Um, even from Chauvin's mother, who I don't think, I mean, it might have been good for Derek Chauvin to hear his mother there to support him, but she maintained that narrative. He offered some deeper sense of remorse and empathy. Uh, that might have made a difference to the family. All right, uh, Paul Butler, thank you for standing by with us. NBC's Megan Fitzgerald is in George Floyd Square, where obviously this has been being very watched very carefully. Megan? Yeah, Lester, you know, this is the place, obviously, where George Floyd was killed, just directly behind me here. And uh, worth noting that just a couple of weeks ago, it was a group of community members, along with the city, that uh, reopened this area, because you'll remember it was closed to traffic. Uh, but despite that, I can tell you that the same sentiment, uh, the same passion, the same reasons why people have come here still remains. I want to kind of show you around what's happening here. Not a large group of people, but nonetheless, people who have come out here today uh, to remember George Floyd's life. And this is what this area... Uh, has always been a place for people to pray, for them to reflect, also to remember the lives uh, of other people killed at the hands of police. I've been speaking with people out here, and just moments ago, there were chants of 30 years. Uh, for many people, a high sentence is closure for them. Of course, we know that the other three officers will stand trial in March. Uh, but for them, you know, this is a big day. This is a day that sort of uh, wraps it all up. Uh, the officer that kneeled on George Floyd's neck for nine minutes and 29 seconds, the power of being in this location uh, when they hear the verdict uh, is something that they say can't be compared. So people are here with their cell phones out, uh, waiting and hoping, they say, uh, for a just verdict of 30 years, something they say will send a message to the nation. Megan That's Fitzgerald and George Floyd Square Force, as we all wait, uh, Judge Cahill still uh, in chambers right now. We expect to see him again shortly, and this uh, uh, sentencing will go forward. I want to bring in NBC legal analyst Danny Savalos. Uh, Danny, I want to get your thoughts, but especially on a uh, hearing from uh, former officer Chauvin's mother, um, you know, what effect that may or may not have in your view. It was a, definitely a very sympathetic moment for Derek Chauvin's mother, but it may not have played well with the judge because sentencing judges don't want to hear someone get up and say how this sentencing will hurt me. I'm going to lose out because I'm losing a son. That's the kind of thing that judges might not take the right way because it's really about either remorse or the harm that was done to the victim. So while I have all kinds of sympathy for Derek Chauvin's mom, and look, it's hard to get up there, and this is probably the hardest speaking moment of her life. Uh, you know, for Derek Chauvin, the defense probably hopes that kind of wild that, like, I mean, she's a mom, bro. That, well, of course. This is just about my loss, my loss of my son. It's all, it, it, my what is she supposed to say? Like, of course she's going to be like, my, my no, son is not racist. Uh, she's literally really, making an impact really statement to garner sympathy for her son.
thinking that like this will reduce his sentence. It's sad, but it's expected. You know what I mean? Like, that's just, it was a bad statement, though. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, she did raise someone who ended up murdering an innocent black person in cold blood in front of a massive crowd. So, you know, yeah. What were you expecting from the mother? Just like, what are you expecting for me to be like, yeah, fuck her. Like, okay. And yeah, fuck her. Give a full formal statement at this time. Um, but very briefly, though, I uh, do want to give my condolences to the Floyd family. Um, there's going to be some other information in the future that would be of interest. And uh, I hope things will give you some some peace of mind. Thank you. And uh, again, uh, Derek Chauvin in the courtroom just a few minutes ago before the judge retired uh, to consider what he's heard this uh, early. Yeah, he's going to, in a, in a few moments, in like a couple minutes, we are going to find out what the uh, judge's uh, opinion on the sentencing is. Like, we're, the sentencing hearing is happening or happened already. Uh, there was a 15-minute uh, there's a 15-minute break here. Uh, and and when well, one, the judge comes back, he's going to tell us uh, if he fucking threw the book at uh, Derek Chauvin or not. His trial. Um, I found it interesting that he not only expressed his condolences to the Floyd family, but no, looked at gonna, them uh, to express I'm not gonna condolences. Change, like, the cryptic nature of this new information that he says he believes he didn't say will he's give sorry the Floyd or regret. family, oh, yes, he did. quote, peace of mind. It matter. Oh, I'm curious to sorry. know what that is. Because given given the um, the impact statements from the two Floyd the Floyd uh, nephew and the two brothers, I can't I don't see what could possibly come I mean, out that would bring them any kind of peace of mind. I believe it was um, Felonis Floyd who said, "quote My family and I have been handed a life sentence," which I found interesting, especially after um, Derek Chauvin's mother, Carolyn Palenti said in her um, statement, when you sentence to the judge, when you sentence my son, you will be sentencing me. These are very powerful um, moments in the courtroom. Where yeah, you can go to jail too the, then. The How about that? Statement. <laughs> but I wasn't expecting to hear from uh, Derek Chauvin's mother. And so I am actually very curious to see how this plays out, especially given what Danny just said about um, how that might impact the judge. A very, very. I don't know why they're not talking about the weird statement that Shelvin said about like due to legal other legal issues, he can't give a statement, and he that he gives his condolences to the Floyd family and says new information will come out that he hopes will give them a peace of mind. Like I don't know what that means. I don't know what's going on there. Uh. So we'll see. I mean, I, I understand what the prosecution was trying to do, trying to make this a very discreet case and have it be on the facts on the ground, um, following the evidence and keeping the trial focused, keeping the witnesses focused, keeping the, the judge focused and not and the jury focused and not distracted by all of the other things that were at play, the, the politics that got involved, and also how the murder of George Floyd fits into the larger narrative of this country when it comes to African Americans, African American men in particular, and their interactions, sometimes fatal interactions with law enforcement. They, as, as much as they were able to keep it separate there in the courtroom, out in the court of public opinion, they are intricately linked. The nation was watching um, nervously when the sentence came, uh, when the verdict came down because of viewing the, sh the, the Chauvin trial as part of the larger narrative. Today, um, even though those words were said again in the courtroom, the nation is going to be watching to see that one hurdle was reached and a pl white police officer found guilty for murdering uh, an unarmed black man. Now, how much time will that poli former police officer 
serve for killing that unarmed black man. And if there's one thing that Eric Nelson said that I agree with, no matter what sentence the judge hands down, there will be people on all sides of this issue who quite possibly uh, might not be satisfied. Most watching at home or in the workplace, uh, but some are watching from across that courtroom. That's where we go to Gabe Gutierrez again uh, with a growing crowd uh, waiting to hear what the, what the judge hands down. Gabe. Uh, hi there, Lester. Well, yes, they're continuing to chant Black Lives Matter here, anxiously awaiting uh, the sentence. I'm joined by Athena Papagenopoulos here, a Minneapolis resident. Uh, she has organized a few of the protests here in this community. And why was it so important for you to be physically right here, right now, listening to this sentence, essentially in person? You're listening through a speaker out here. Yeah, it's just important to show that we're still together with the community and that we're going to be here for the community and the family, like no matter what happens throughout the entire process. And Athena, as my uh, colleague, uh, for the journalist Bill Angelucci kind of pans around and shows the crowd. Athena, what was your reaction to some of the things we just heard from? Uh, George Floyd's young daughter, Gianna, gave a, gave a message, and so did uh, several of his family members. What was the most powerful uh, section for you? What was the most powerful moment? It's the fact that she has the strength to be up there doing what she's doing. She's a young black woman, just really a child, and the whole situation is just so beyond heartbreaking. But to have to put someone up there time and time again and constantly be in the spotlight. Her presence in general is amazing. There were some in the crowd here that gave a strong reaction when they heard Derek Chauvin's mother as well as Chauvin himself very briefly uh, get up and speak. What was your reaction when you heard that? I understand when you have a child, you want to back them no matter what, you know, and their wrongs and their rights and what they do. But I just don't have respect for that because he's clearly just going through the motions of this trial. So for her to have more emotion than him throughout this entire process and that small snippet, I just... I didn't feel good about it. And Athena, we were here in this spot just two months ago when the verdict came down. There were cheers that erupted here. It seemed like a weight had been lifted off of this community in Minneapolis. What do you consider to be the historic significance of this moment? And what do you consider an appropriate punishment for Derek Chauvin to be? We can't get the appropriate punishment because, you know, with the laws and everything, but it has to be maximum of what they're willing to give or else that's just as bad as them saying, no, you don't get it. Because if we get, you know, 10, 12, 13 years, that's them saying that you're not worthy of what I feel my child is worthy of. And that's ultimately what it comes down to. And um, just just being here with the community just makes it all better because. Damn, what is she? He's like, he's not going to get what he deserves. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, I wonder what she meant by that. Uh, anyway, look, I'm going to run the ad right now. No fucking clever segue because uh, I want, you know, I don't want people to miss out on it uh, when the verdict uh, or when the sentencing comes in. So it's, uh, you know, another top of the hour ad right now. If you'd like an ad-free broadcasting experience, you already know, VPN, ad block subscription you can subscribe for five dollars or you can subscribe for free with a twitch prime you know but here is the uh, ad break now boys again not just for not just for this community lester uh but obviously across the country we keep uh, talking to people from chicago uh from michigan and also uh, this woman here are you from minneapolis yes, ma'am marcia uh, tell me sure born and raised why is it so important for you Gabe, to be here uh, right now Gabe, we're gonna break away from you uh, uh, the judge is back in the courtroom Okay, well, I was wrong. Sorry. Not I just the people I'd... who were in the courtroom here, but also those who provided written statements, uh, both from Oops. the Floyd family and the defendant's family. I've read all the impact statements that were submitted earlier and listened carefully to all the input here today. And it is truly appreciated that you took the time to stay with this case and to provide me with input. I have reviewed the pre-sentence investigation and carefully considered all the facts of the case and the law, but my comments are actually going to be very brief because most of it's going to be in writing. I have a 22-page memorandum that is going to be attached to the sentencing order. And why am I doing it in writing? To emphasize the fact that determining the appropriate sentence in any case, and in this case, is a legal analysis. It's applying the rule of law to the facts of an individual and specific case. And that is why, as opposed to trying to be being profound here on the record, I prefer that you read the legal analysis 
that explains how I determine the sentence in this case. Uh oh. What the cases are, or what the sentence Fuck. is not based on is emotion or sympathy. But at the same time, I want to acknowledge the deep and tremendous pain that all the families are feeling, especially the Floyd family. You have our sympathies. And I acknowledge and hear the pain that you are feeling. I acknowledge the pain not only of those in this courtroom, but the Floyd family who are outside this courtroom and other members of the community. I have to be it has so been painful bad, dude. throughout Hennepin County, throughout the state of Minnesota, and even the country. But most importantly, we need to recognize the pain of the Floyd family. I'm not going to attempt to be profound or clever because it's not the appropriate time. I'm not basing my sentence also on public opinion. I am not basing it on any attempt to send any messages. A trial court judge, the job of a trial court judge is to apply the law to specific facts and to deal with individual cases. And so, Mr. Chauvin, as to count one, based on the verdict of the jury, finding you guilty of unintentional second degree murder while committing a felony under Minnesota statute 609.19 subdivision two paren one. It is the judgment of the court that you now stand convicted of that offense. Pursuant to Minnesota statute uh, section 60904, counts two and three will remain unadjudicated as they are lesser offenses of count one. As sentence for count one, the court commits you to the custody of the Commissioner of Corrections for a period of 270 months. That's 270. That is a 10 year addition to the presumptive sentence of 150 months. This is based on your uh, abuse of a position of trust and authority and also the particular cruelty shown to George Floyd. You're granted credit for 199 days already served. Pay the mandatory surcharge of $78 to be paid from prison wages. You're prohibited from possessing firearms, ammunition, or explosives for the remainder of your life. Provide a DNA sample as required by law. Register as a predatory offender as required by law. And then you will receive a copy of the order and also the attached memorandum explaining the court's analysis. Anything further from the state? If this needs to be said, we just ask that it be executed forthwith. Defendant is remanded to the custody of the sheriff to be transported uh, back to the DOC or whichever custody is currently holding him. Anything from the defense? No, you are. All right. Thank you. We are adjourned. The uh, judge not reading his full sentencing memorandum and getting very virtually right to the sentencing and sentencing uh, Derek Chauvin, the former Minneapolis police officer, to 22 and a half years in prison. That is less than the maximum, but certainly far more uh, than Chauvin and his attorneys were asking for. Let's go to Gabe Gutierrez right now, who is across the street from the courthouse, where we've been watching a growing crowd. I uh, assume the word is getting there now. What's the reaction you're seeing? Uh, hey, Lester. Well, uh, I should let you know, this crowd is maybe on a 30-second delay from where they've been hearing, so it is just starting to spread through the crowd right now. It was quiet. Um, 22, people kind of taking it's it all 22 in, point five, waiting 22 and a half years. process, um, and it's I'm a, trying to listen fucking, for some reaction now. It's a but, solid uh, sentence, in my opinion. I spoke with uh, a short I mean, time ago, Athena. You were just listening to it, so 22 and a half years, the sentence handed down to Derek Chauvin. That is 10 years more than the recommended guidelines. You just heard what the judge had to say. What's your immediate reaction? 
Um, like, it's wild to... I'm taking this as a win for my community right now. Um, we needed this. It could have gone just so far left that there was no coming back. He said, you know, that he's not doing this, you know, for the public, but he knew he really, really had to. It just had to be done this way, and I'm really thankful. Thankful, so thankful for my community and the world and just showing that we can't go on like this. Um, but I also take a second back to think about all of the other people this has happened to with the knee on the neck since George Floyd. So I'm taking it as this is a small a small victory right now, and I'm just so appreciative, but it's going to take me a second to process it. He didn't get nowhere near enough. Like, Seeing okay, the bare minimum is a win. For him. Now let's move forward with who has continued to do this after. Thank you very much, Thank Athena. You. I really appreciate you talking to him. Lester, and I was just uh, starting to speak with a Minneapolis resident uh, right before uh, the hearing came back. And ma'am, hi, how are you? Yeah, they gave, yeah, 22 and a half years, ma'am, is what they just gave him. So the word is trickling out here, Lester. Ma'am, what's your immediate reaction? Derek Chauvin sentenced to 22 and a half years in prison. Maybe that is, maybe, he's setting an example of all the other dirty cops here. It's good that he, it's bad what he did, but he's not shot other black men here. And they say he has a criminal charges, which is true, but the police won't, they didn't charge him for it. Well, thank you, very, ma'am, very much for talking to us. I know it's kind of hard to get some information here, but 22 and a half years. Is what thank, thank you very much, ma'am. So, Lester, again, kind of a, you know, a, a situation here where we're trying to get as much reaction as we can. And again, word is starting to trickle out. Um, the judge uh, said uh, the sentence first in months, so, you know, people are trying to make the calculation here, again, to 22 and a half years. But, sir, uh, the, the, um, the, situ the situation here, the sentence just handed down 22 and a half years we just spoke I have to be. I'll be back in one second from Chicago. Okay. what's your reaction guilty was served I don't think that that's enough time to send a message that needs to be sent to say that justice is trying to work for people of color it's it's a dent but we still feel empty today we feel empty because it still feels like twisted justice in which we're all so accustomed to you know but we did get a guilty and then we did get time but mm -mm. It's, it's we just feel void today you know, it's still, it still feel void. Thank you very much, sir. So, Lester, again, some uh, conflicting feelings here. Some folks, uh, you may be able to hear somebody behind me. There's a bit of anger here that uh, they wanted more. Certainly many people uh, in this community, uh, they had wanted the maximum, up to 40 years. Legal, ex legal experts, of course, um, said that that wasn't likely. Prosecutors asked for 30 years. So, again, 22 and a half years for Derek Chauvin on that second-degree murder charge. A mixed reaction so far. Some people saying it was enough, so they wanted more than 20 at least others as you can hear in the distance perhaps there is some anger they want they wanted more luster so we're continuing to grab uh, to get reaction here as this crowd continues to grow but for now i'm going to send that back to you Lester. all right uh, gabe thanks very much 22 and a half years that would uh, put uh, mr chauvin at 67 uh when he is released from prison let's go to paul butler right now uh, paul is this in the neighborhood of where you thought the judge might come down in this case it's actually higher, Lester. The judge essentially threw the book at Mr. Chauvin. 22 years sets a new precedent in Minnesota. The only other officer to be convicted of murder in that state got, got 12. 12 and a half years. So the judge said his sentence was about legal analysis. Mohammed Noor got 12 and a half years for murdering, uh, what was the, I'm forgetting her name now, the victim's this name. This case will impact other officers this is i a don't think tough sentence uh, mr chauvin will not see the light of day i don't think decades. people understand the significance and of like hopefully uh, that will putting a cop in jail officers approach for a murder during the uh putting a cop in jail and like serving justice and the reason why people are so fucking upset all the time and in the streets is because like of precisely how difficult it is to throw a cop in jail for murdering someone on the job, okay? Half the time, you can't even throw cops in jail for murdering people off the fucking job, let alone on the job. And in Minnesota, that was not a thing that ever happened. Never happened for a white cop murdering a black uh, person on the job. And the only time it happened was with 
uh, with Mohamed Noor. And it was for 12 and a half years. So... Anyway. Rally for justice for him, and we're going to keep supporting all these other families in Cooling for Love y'all. Big up. Okay. There. Uh, the fuck's going on here? Um, I hope that the fairness uh, exhibited here uh, is is extended to everyone. I turned off the audio for a second. They're having a hard time filming right now. This not a fucking story. We're not zoo exhibits. We're not fucking animals. I I fought American justice more than anyone else. You think it's a good sentencing? Yes, I think it's a good sentence. Uh, I do. I, I but you know. People uh, will disagree with me on that. But with everything I believe as far as like rehabilitative justice and, and um, like uh, with everything I believe, yes, I think 22 and a half years is, uh, is a decent sentence. Anyway. Um, Van Jones disagrees. He was disappointed. Okay. He's only getting 15 years. You're saying because he's going to be out on good behavior? Yeah, I know. I, I understand that. But ultimately, that's not something that you're considering when you're giving people their sentencing. From this, I dedicated my life to this fight for justice. And none of these fucking corporate media. All y'all care about black trauma. All y'all care about black trauma. Like, for the people who are... Uh, of He's also a cop in prison, so just remember media. that. I can prove to the chief, international chief of police, and now we get yeah, the fucking police. Is anyone from the media going to cover this? Hey, can we get everybody back in the circle, please? Hey, everybody back in the circle, please. Right on. Let's not be all over. Can we get everybody back in the circle? <laughs> Hey, can we get everybody back in the circle, Why are there non-violent offenders serving? Why are there non-violent drug offenders serving longer longer sentences? Is a great question. Because of America's incredibly draconian attitude towards crime and punishment, that's why. But the proper approach with a, a focus on rehabilitative justice is not to say like uh, throw the book at like every single person. The proper approach. Focusing on rehabilitative justice is to say that this is a decent sentencing um, and that uh, that sympathy, uh, timed tenfold, should be extended to all nonviolent uh, offenders that are in prison for uh, uh, ridiculous charges. There's an there's a old black man that just recently got out of prison uh, after serving like 60 years or some shit in jail or in prison for stealing two t-shirts. Like this is basically what I talk about with respect to uh, the American criminal justice system. Like that, it's, it's ridiculous. It's horrifying. <clears throat> Awakened to this issue in a new way. George Floyd likely, let's hope, did not die in vain. Terry, thank you. And we're seeing more people there in Minneapolis showing up at that memorial site. Deb, Are you comparing it to, to nonviolent we criminals? I'm not the one comparing it to nonviolent criminals. Chatter just brought it up. For, for healing the country that has been through so much over the course of the last year, Ben Crump himself says one step closer to healing. 
Uh, and, I, and I see you've been talking to a lot of people about this. Well, you know, I think for so many people, it's hard not to feel the personal uh, uh, effects of this, even as Terry just talked Sorry, about. Sorry, it wasn't 67 years. It was a 20-year um, prison sentence for stealing two shirts. The, mom of a black son, and that, the and man's name was Guy Frank. I mean, but we all witnessed this, and we went through this case and this, this, this trial. So it's been a traumatic time, I think, for a lot of people. We know that there's still not more 60, charges to come. I said 67, to charges in this case. but that was his but age. I fucked up the number. This the chapter on this part of the George Floyd story, and I do believe that for some people, there will be some measure of satisfaction. Doesn't happen very often, particularly when it is a, a black uh, a person who was lost at the hands of police, but I think for a number of people, and certainly I would say for this mom, it is nice to see that this case is sort of put to rest, at least for now, and I think that for a lot of people, this will be maybe some measure of healing. Like you said, closing one chapter. There still is more to this story. Absolutely. Deborah, thank you so much. And thanks to our entire team for the coverage of Derek Chauvin's sentencing, 22 and a half years in prison. Our coverage on this story continues on ABC News Live and abcnews.com. Of course, we'll have a full wrap up on this and that breaking news out of Florida, that 12 story building collapse. Our David Muir is there covering the tragic events. He will be there live tonight for World News Tonight. For the entire team, I'm Whit Johnson in New York. Have a good day. He will have to be in solitary for most of his for most of his sentence. Uh, his situation is not going to be good in prison. He's a fucking murderer cop. Cops in general don't have a good time in prison, okay? Like they're they are at the same level as like pedophiles in prison. They will get murdered in general population. Okay? They I don't even know if they can get uh I don't even know if they can be around other pedophiles that would still probably murder them. Which is um so he's not he's not going to have a, a fun time in prison. It's not like a cakewalk, if that is any solace or comfort for those who are looking for vindication and uh, revenge from the criminal justice system. Okay? So to all of the uh, draconian Andes, I, I understand why you would be very angry and seeing blood in this circumstance, uh, and knowing what you do, uh, knowing what you know about our, uh, you know, knowing what you know about this uh, particular instance of cold-blooded murder. Do you think it's okay that cops can get extrajudicially ju murdered in prison? No. Um, the other part of that is that will literally be used as a way to uh, maybe even, uh, well, we'll see what happens. But that, that circumstance could be used to lower his sentence let down the line. People who are saying um, he might get out on good behavior in 15 years, that's True, he could. Um, fuck rehabilitation, he's a racist murderer. Okay. Once again, I understand where you're coming from uh, in this uh, it, because of uh, how passionate everyone feels about the situation. But uh, remember what we talk about all the time with respect to rehabilitative justice. Our justice system doesn't create justice. It creates resentment, pain, and suffering. Anyone looking for justice and sensing, seeing, hearing is looking in the wrong place? Yes. This guy will get to start a new life in 15 years. George Floyd doesn't. Yeah, I, I know. I understand. Uh, I, I have this conversation about uh, nearly every single offense. Uh, unfortunately, when talking to Americans, there are a couple issues that uh, the American leftist audience uh, routinely loses their principles on. The criminal justice system being rehabilitative rather than uh, focusing on the extended uh, length of sentencing and, and more punitive 
uh, is one of those instances, and the other one is sex and sex work and sexuality in general. Americans are very puritanical and lose their shit when it comes to sex uh, and have, like, really backwards points of view on sex and sexuality. And they have really backwards views on uh, the criminal justice system as they routinely advocate for harsher sentencing. Overall, from my point of view, uh, uh, knowing what I know and also uh, my principles that I believe in, I believe that uh, the 22 and a half year sentence is decent. Remember, this is not justice. This is the justice system um, uh, taking the first step for the first time possibly uh it, wait hold on one second uh for the first time possibly uh ever uh bringing this uh bringing this sort of conviction you know what i mean so it, it's a it's a first step towards justice Justice would be making him learn CRT. Okay, shut the fuck up. It's not how reactionary the left get when it comes to revenge. Personally, I would not want the death sentence. I may, uh, I may happen to be murdered. It is insane not to give another a chance to rehabilitate. Yes. Being draconian back isn't the solution is what you're saying, right? Yes, that's what I'm saying. That is what I'm saying. And ultimately... What I'm also saying here is that, like, the 22-year sentence is not only uh, a decent sentence for this, uh, for this murderer, but also uh, is a good way to show the rest of the country and the cops that, like, hey, there is a fraction of accountability coming your way if you do act this way. So it is still incredibly significant. Okay. I mean, if you act this way and get caught on video, yeah. I wonder if him being a cop will lead to the friction with prison guards and the such. Maybe good behavior isn't a given. Uh, mm. Isn't that the same logic as mandatory minimums? I mean, it would be the same logic as mandatory minimums if we literally had, like, any sort of fucking accountability within the criminal justice system for cops behaving this way but we don't so like this is the this is one of the few instances where there's like at least a a specific way of showing like here there are some punishments that will get uh, doled out if you act out at a certain point if you have a child and you're trying to tr educate your child on what not to do at a certain point you have to draw a line like I, as someone who believes in uh, re reforming the uh, criminal justice system, I don't say that there is no need for prisons at all or that uh, there is no need for even the police force in general. There always is going to be, there always are going to be laws uh, and, and law and order should be, uh, law and order should always be well-defined and maintained. 
So, you know, that's, this, is a, this is a step towards that. Anarchists in shambles. I mean, anarchists, uh, even prison abolitionists understand that there are like edge cases where uh, taking someone away from the rest of society is a necessity. It's just more so about democratizing that decision as best as possible and all of the other uh, decisions leading up to that. Anarchy is about the abolition of unjust hierarchies not hierarchies for the sake of existence like hierarchy it's not about abolishing hierarchy for the sake of there being a hierarchy well maybe some anarchists do believe that but anyway okay This is the judge's conclusion for 20, uh, uh, on the 22-page explanation. Part of the mission of the Minneapolis Police Department is to give citizens voice and respect. Here, Mr. Chauvin, rather than pursuing the MPD mission, treated Mr. Floyd without respect and denied him the dignity owed to all human beings, which he certainly would have extended to a friend or a neighbor. In the court's view, 270 months, which amounts to an additional 10 years over the presumptive 150-month sentence, is the appropriate sentence. Yeah. Um... Anarchy is about abolishing all hierarchies. Unjust hierarchies can be considered to be the goal of every ideology because unjustified is in entirely subjective. Okay, my bad positive person. Once again, our favorite anarchity in the chat uh, chimes in. Yes, dude. Good luck abolishing all hierarchies. Got it. Like, even when I try to redeem uh, anarchism, you, like, literally turn around and and... Uh, have to be like, no, actually, it is ridiculous. Like, no, the worldview is ridiculous. I know all the other anarchy, uh, anarchies also going to fucking now chime in and be like, no, you're literally, you're literally wrong. So, so justifiable hierarchies need to also abolish, uh, be abolished. So just, uh, we, we will live in a world without any hierarchy whatsoever. Got it. Yes, always. Oh, I am. Uh, yes, I do mention this a lot. But yes, anarchists might have some strange views, but they're very present and helpful with activism slash protest and mutual aid. Yes, they are. They're at the forefront of social justice as well, regardless of what their worldview might be. Yes, abolish parents, abolish mods, abolish all forms of regulation, abolish all, all forms of laws which are built upon uh, hierarchy, the notion of hierarchy. Like, anarchy is when I want to break the law, but then, uh, but then someone tells me I shouldn't do that and violates my freedom and my personal liberty to be able to break the law. Good one. Okay. Um
Let's continue. The law only exists to serve the needs of the bourgeoisie. Yeah, like, um, yeah, correct. Like, uh, you know, statutory rape. Just serving the needs of the bourgeoisie. Very good. No, no good. There are no good laws in the books. Is a really solid uh, approach to this. You can say that the bourgeoisie routinely break it. Okay. You can say that uh, the capital owning class uh, routinely skirt the law in a similar capacity to uh, how like Western nations have built this uh, idea of, of uh, human rights uh, exclusively to just bully other developing nations and justify their violations of human rights in an effort to stop the violations of human rights that are occurring in smaller nations. You say something like that, but ultimately like throwing human rights out uh, in the trash across the board is, is a silly approach, I think. And if you have laws, you're always going to need a regulatory force, whether it's completely democratized or not. There is going to be a regulatory force that, you know, that is organized and maintains uh, the, the law. Okay. What's next? A license to toast in your own damn toaster? Yes. I think all laws and regulations are bad, which is why I think wearing a seatbelt is silly. That's the nanny state stopping me from wanting to, you know, uh, wanting to, to get, just be significantly more damaged and injured in a car accident than otherwise. Real men fly out the car window, brother. Come on, liberals in your travel think all anarchists like are like that? No, but the fucking most vocal ones are annoying sometimes and do uh, take uh, like a relatively cringe uh, POV on how the world works. And, you know, sometimes I like making fun of that for a brief moment. Sometimes it is literally every day. Okay, well, fucking, you know, there's Marxist Leninists that have cringe ass points of view too. Feel me? Okay, trigger warning. Uh, Ted Cruz, I, I don't want to watch Ted Cruz mansplaining. <laughs> 